Yeah, I got a light. I forgot I have to light. Okay. I probably will save this live. Um. All right, good. Y'all are back. Y'all are back. Y'all are back. Y'all are back. So, I wanted to change the topic of this live because I really want to talk about this. I saw somebody talk. Hey, Denise. Um, I talked about, come on, content, D2. I saw your post today. I said, come on, content. Um, but yes, I saw somebody. She was an esthetician. And she was at answering a question from her. I guess someone asked her, like, oh, like, how do you make money during your live? And just for the new people that joined on this live, like I said on the last live, there's there's no separation between me and God. So you're going to hear me talking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself because the gospel is truth and it's light until our feet at this point. So if you want anything from me, any guidance, any help, how I got to where I am, you're going to get it with some Jesus mixed in there. But um, anyway, so the girl was saying, someone was asking her, like, how do you make money during the recession? Um, because, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, you shouldn't expect your business to grow. You should probably cut back. Um, you know, things aren't going to be that good for you and your business. I have to turn it off. Because the girl started and was like, um, yeah, well, you know, the economy right now, even though the government won't acknowledge that we're in a recession, we are in a recession. I just I just cut it because, you know, like if y'all know why, put it in the chat, put it in, put it in the chat. If you think you know why I decided to turn it off because um, it's no weapon. OK, um, if like I said, please, next Wednesday at 9 p.m., our business Bible study will start. By the grace of God, we will be here um, at 9 p.m. Subscribe to my YouTube page now because I put my the intro to it uh, that I did on Tuesday onto the YouTube page. I will also It's also linked in my stories. But anyway, um, the girl, I said, get behind me, number one. Because number, if you are a follower of Christ, the world's economy has nothing to do with you. OK, so I said, let me turn this off because I bind up this devil because my business is not going to suffer. OK, the whole last six months, my, the income of my business has not only doubled, but tripled. So if you want to claim what's going on in the world, if you want to claim a recession, if you want to claim death over your finances, you go right ahead and go do that. But as for me and my house, no, we're going to serve the Lord. And if you study in this good old scripture, number one, I just want to go back to, because I was, like I said, before I came on this slide, I thought I was going to do about study and the Holy Spirit was like, no, don't do it now, save it. So, but something that I was just doing research on and studying, and this, this applies for blood bought believers. You can't tap a bounce in and out of thinking that you're going to be blessed and highly favored and you just live in however you want to live. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to the people who are applying the word of God to their life. They're living righteously. They're in repentance because this, this word is going to apply to those people. You not being in the economy of the world, you not suffering when the world is saying that, oh, cut back, you won't have, you're going to be in lack. You, if, if, that's what you want to subscribe to fear and death because that's what the enemy gives and provides is fear and death if that's what you want to subscribe to go right on ahead but like i said as for me and my house that does not apply to me because i serve a god the scripture says he owns cattle on a thousand hills i am not of the world i am in it i am not of it so all of these jurisdictions and all the things that the prophets of the land not prophets of God, prophets of the land want to say that, oh, don't, you know, don't worry about too much for your business because, you know, the economy is on a downturn and, you know, things are, people are struggling and this and that. Let me just put this out there because I pay attention. My, I pay attention like there's money involved, okay? So one thing that I did notice during COVID, when everyone was saying, oh, there's nothing, there's no money, there's no this and there's no that, no that. I live in New York City. You know what I did see all the time? Construction. I saw buildings being built. I saw supplies being laid. I saw supplies being sent out. 
The one thing that did not stop was construction. Why? Because there's a constant movement and change and things that's happening. Also, those are contracts. Contracts are already paid. They're already set out. They're already designated to somebody. You can't just renege on a contract. That money is already spent. So guess what? Those jobs had to stay. Those people had to had to continue to build. There were houses, I remember people saying in Texas, there were so many houses built with no windows because people overseas who needed to do those things weren't doing it. But guess what? The rest of the house was up. The rest of the things that we could provide here was up. It was It was working. Because what? The contract was already released. The contract was, ooh, this is a word. The contract was already signed, sealed, and delivered and was sent and had to be honored. We already, the money is designated, COVID, no COVID, okay? The money is designated to this business, to this place. It has to go. It has to, it's been signed. There's a, if you want to use biblical term, there's a covenant that has been made and covenants cannot be broken because then you, you try to break this contract, we go to court, we spend the money. Through. No, what, what's going to happen is we're going to continue to do this because this is what our word says. And how I want to loop this into the, the really the strategy of your life and your business in this season, why you don't need to be declaring a recession over your bank account. You should not be declaring no financial downturns over your bank account because guess what? Do y'all remember what happened during COVID? The rich got richer. Why? Because people were spending money. There was money to be spent. Jeff Bezos became even more of a billionaire than he was prior to. A bunch of people became even more successful than they were prior to. Why? Because they didn't allow what the world system wanted to declare. They kept making business. They kept marketing their business. They kept doing the same things that they were doing. And guess what? People who weren't wise and using their discernment and their wisdom, if you got my email that I just sent out in this season, which the, there's three things that you need to be focusing on is wisdom, sorry, excuse me, is your dis discernment and praying that the Lord give you the discerning of spirits, um, forgiveness, and um, not moving in offense. Those are the three things that you need to focus on in this season if you really want it to turn out in your favor. Because if you're discerning the time, nothing about what the world is saying applies to you. We're not bought by the world. We're bought by the precious blood of the lamb. There's nothing that the world can decree and declare over you that you need to walk in. You walk in the word and the truth of God. And that leads me literally to Deuteronomy 28. And it says... Uh, 28 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the of the Lord thy God not the news anchors not your raggedy president not no governing official not no economic forecasters not your bank branches not the person who never wanted you to succeed anyway who's whispering in your, your ear about your little business not any of those people. It says the word, the voice of God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, I want to bring this back to in one of my scriptures. Uh, in day 15 of our November challenge, the set one, when I was talking about Joseph, that Joseph's book, well, not book, but really Genesis, but the section where it talks about Joseph can honestly really preach, to be honest, um, because that man was sent. He was a sent one. We established that. Go watch day 15. It's called a sent one. What I want to say to you, though, is he was, it was a famine. The Lord it said his voice, the voice of that God gave them a dream that he was the only one that could interpret, which we know the interpretation belongs to God. So God gave him, God gave him the interpretation of his voice again, and he was able to discern, okay, this is what this dream means. It means that we're about to be in a year, seven years of plenty, and then we're going to go into seven years of famine. So we're going to go ahead and keep all this together. We're going to take what we need to take, store what we need to store up, have what we need to have. Because when we hit the seven years of famine, we're going to be good. We're going to be set up. 
And that's the time that we're in now. The seven years of plenty. This is the time where you're, but don't listen to the world. You know who's going to be in famine right now in these years of plenty? The world. Because they're not following God. Because what did it say? It said those people who heard his voice, who hearkened unto his voice. It says, um, this day I will set you on high and all these bless blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Come on, if you want to overtake and bless, I want an overtaking blessing, okay? One that's going to literally consume, bless me so much that literally I don't even know what to do with it. I want to be consumed. Overtaking blessings. Um, it says, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy castle. Your home, every place you go, your business, your place of business. Again, you want to listen to the world and let the world tell you that you, you're you in famine when that's not what God's voice is saying to you. If he gave you that vision, you think he's going to give you that business plan for you to step out on your business, for you to go and pursue things and overtake all the, the word the Lord gave me at the end of last year was pursue. He said to me um, in the, in the um, it was with Gideon, I believe. And Gideon um, was going to go fight. And uh, no, it's David. Sorry. Um, I mean, not to work, study, so I would have the scriptures right. Don't judge me. Um, but the story is, it was David. So David was saying, I'm trying to remember which book it was in. But David was saying like, Lord, he came back from war. All his whole city was plundered. Nothing he had was there. Everything was taken. And he was like, yo, what's good, Lord? Like, what am I supposed to do? And he was like, I'm about to go down there and light everybody up and take all the stuff that belongs to me. And he said, Lord, shall I pursue? And God said, yes and overtake all and he went and ran down on them people and took everything back and then some that belonged to him and i say that to say this season is overtake all okay don't listen to the world don't listen and we ain't in over no the people of god are not in a recession because the God that we serve is a God of abundance. He didn't set you up to be over here begging. He didn't set you up to be a lend a borrower. He set you up to be a lender. So again, let's be mindful. Let's discern what the time that we're in. Let's discern the position of our business. Let's discern what we're supposed to be speaking and declaring over our business. Because we know that the power of life and death is in the tongue. So if you want to say, oh, my business is in a recession. Oh, you know, I probably shouldn't do this. No. Mark it just, hard, just as hard. Because guess what? I know these Amazon people, every other second is popping up with Amazon finds. I know Jeff Bezos is still pushing marketing and influencers and all of this other stuff. So, but you and your, your little business, because if you want to keep it a little business, you're going to pay attention to these prophets of the land, which are false prophets that are telling you to go run and hide. No, they need to go run and hide. They need to go watch themselves. They need to go check again. But not, not the people of God. This is your season to thrive. This is your season to go hard. This is your season to go get and recover all. Everything the enemy has taken from you. All the time. All the energy. All the folk, the mental focus. Everything that he has taken from you. This is your time to recover all. He said, David said, shall I pursue? God said, yes, and recover all. A.K.A. I'm about to make sure you get all of that and a bag of chips, okay? You're going to take everything, everything, and then some. So I just want to finish this because especially for people that are in the beauty business or anything like that, because there's a part that really um, will bless you. It says, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Hello. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in and bless this. I love this because this is something that you can speak over your life. Thank you. This is how much I need it. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God, Denise. I'm so happy to read that right now. I am so, I pray blessings over you and your business and your family. May all the things that you put your hand to flourish in the name of Jesus. I pray bless. That's that's a faith move. And that's what this year is about. Radical obedience because God is going to bless it. <clears throat> he is going to bless it. The word says your gifts will make room for you. 
it will literally part the seas for you. It'll literally give you the opportunities that you're looking for. Let me finish reading this scripture because this in here, honey, um, blessed shall thou, this is what you need to pray. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in and blessed shall thou be when they go, when thy go out. Blessed is your coming and going. Every time you cross the threshold into your business, that's what you need to say. Blessed is my coming and blessed is my going. Blessed are the clients that are supposed to be here. Blessed are the clients that you are sending here that I haven't even touched yet. Lord, because they need to be blessed because I need their finances to come pour into my business. Let's, let's, let's start applying this word like we're supposed to. Because for too long, we've been dilly-dallying and just getting the word and going to church, just letting it, you know, sprinkle, give you a little good feeling and make you feel. No, that's not what this word. We're supposed to be applying this word like the world wants to apply its death to us. The world wants you to go run with the idea that you're in a recession. Why is that more powerful than the word of God that is telling you that is not the case? That blessed is your coming and going. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of the body and the fruit of the ground and the fruit of the cattle. The increase of thy kind. An increase. The flocks and the sheep. Blessed be thy basket and thy store. Where is their lack? Where is there? Because this Bible don't talk about lack. It talk about lack for the people that shouldn't have had it in the beginning. And it being taken from them because it says the wealth of the of, of the wealthy, basically of the world, is stored up for the righteous. So let them go store up. And like I was talking about my last my last live, which I'll talk about in the next one. This wealth transfer that's happening, they done stored up the wealth that's about to be yours and mine. The righteous ones, the believers. He he done stored up. They stored it up. Go ahead and go do all what you're doing because that money is about to be mine. Because I'm commanding it to come to me. I'm commanding creation to send me what is mine. We, we are hearing that the Lord said, you will be blessed. That blessings will overtake you. That's what I'm declaring over my life. I know recession and my business is not going to thrive and I'm going to fail and it's not going to go well for me. It's cut back. Don't have this. It's Jeff Bezos. Did he get a, a smaller yacht? Did he, did he exchange a jet? Did he... what? Because why are you telling me what? No, 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 full stop. No. Um, uh, and then it goes on to say Gen uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before these seven ways. To God be the glory. To flee. They're going to flee. They're going to try, but they will flee seven ways. We know seven is the number of completion. So they will be gone up out of your life. Okay? The enemies. They will be gone. And there's another scripture in um, Proverbs 16, 7. It says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. Even the people that want to hate you, the Lord can make them want to be at peace with you. What, like, do you want to, do you want to be in a recession? Because if you want to be in a recession, go ahead and be in a recession. But I don't want to be in a recession. My business is not going to be, I'm not speaking death over my business in my life. There's, there's, there's no recession over here. I'm still, I'm still planning the best things for my life. Okay, because the word says better is the end of a thing than the beginning. This is this is a new season. It's the end of that old thing and we in something new now. So this is <laughs> this is the better. I'm by my best days are ahead of me. That's what you need to be declaring. My best days are ahead of me. How does you how does you declaring the recession of your business? How does that support your growth? How does that support your goals? How does that support the vision that God gave you for your business? Did he show you a business that you were supposed to start and that would just miraculously fail? Is that what he showed you? Did he show you and tell you to go do this business, to go do this thing? But yeah, I'm going to send you to go do all this stuff just so I could kill it. Is that, is, is, is that what he showed you when he showed you the vision? 
because I, I don't I don't know that to be the, the identity of my God. But let's keep going. Um, this here. So it says Deuteronomy 28, 8. The Lord shall command, command. I wish I had my, my, my other phone were doing the live on because I wanted to look up this word, but we could do it another time. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. Command the blessing upon y'all need to get excited when you read like the same the same energy or feeling that the news wants to give. I don't watch the news, but that the news wants to give you that fear because you know the news stations they're 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 supported by depression medications and all of this. You see Pfizer, they've never one sponsor. Like it's all it's all fun. It's all for your demise. That's what I'm saying. All of these, you know, corporate, it's, it's a business. Let's be clear, it's a business. So they're feeding you death so that they can then give you a prescription to continue to kill you that you've now welcomed, you've ushered that into your life. You've allowed them to tell you, yes, 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 you're going to die. And yes, it says pay for this thing. Don't support your business. But pay for this drug that will continue to kill you and not actually make you feel better, but just keep you even, keep you numb to the things of God. Because I've now I that that the feeling of, of of things that are above and not beneath that the word says that you're supposed to have, it's now been stifled. We've done our job here. We've made you afraid. We've made you sick. We've done what we're supposed because you know the enemy's here to steal, kill, and destroy. We've done our job. We're good. We're good here. Now let's throw throw, throw the drugs at them. Throw the throw the medication at them. They're they're ready for that now. We've we've dumbed down their discernment, their senses. We're, we're they're ready. They're ready. Drug them up. Let them let them go take some antidepressants because that's who's funding these news programs anyway. Go on and go on. Go ahead and go do that. So that's what you want to subscribe to when the word of God that is supposed to that not supposed to that does bring you life and life more abundantly. That is going to increase your capacity for blessing. That is going to keep you in alignment so that this word that we're reading in Deuteronomy 28 is your life. It says, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and all that thou settest thine hand unto all of you service providers. Hello, licensed service, licensed professional. We're service providers. Whatever your business is, you're, providing, you're, you're putting your hands on something, okay? It says... Um, and he shall bless, uh, and, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord that God giveth you. That business he gave you, he's going to bless. So long as, what did we, what was the, the first, the opening line? If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of of the Lord thy God and observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Not what the news has commanded you to do. Go run and hide and go be in your bunker and be afraid because you know whatever it is they telling you. Not That's what they want you to go do. But God is telling you the polar opposite, because he's here to give you life and life more abundantly. So he says, um, the Lord shall establish. It's the, if you look up establish, ooh, it's, it's to literally solidify you, to position you. Shall means there's no, there will be no blemish, no spot, no changing. It, sh it is. It is so. It shall. Shall is more powerful than like, is and will like it sh sh like there's no shaking and shall like it is like it's it's a done deal it's a done it's here like it, it's as good as here it shall establish thee a holy people uh, no not even not that sorry um and he shall bless thee in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee your business he gave you he's going to bless you in it the lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou keep the commandment of the lord thy god and walk in his ways and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by my name so he's about to make you a whole demonstration all people of the earth 
and they shall be afraid of you because they're about to see how your bless up is going to hit. They're going to be like, yo, how? Who? What? During a recession? You did what? Oh, she she doing something different. What's, what's happening over there? Like, what's going on? Yeah, we want all of that. And then some. Because what? Overtake and recover all. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, a.k.a. in all the things, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open up thee his good treasure. I mean, I mean, I mean. Open up his good treasure? And y'all are running scared? And this is the God that you serve? Who are you serving? Because you can't have two masters. The word says, don't be lukewarm or I'm going to spit you out. Be hot or be cold. But you can't be both. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's scripture. You can't one day be like, yeah, okay, we out here. And then the next day, oh, no, the world, it's, it's, a, it's a recession. I'm going to my business. Oh, my God, let me just go back to my job. Oh, my God, like, this is crazy. You just saw a woman of God sit here and say she's, she was put in her resignation letter. I need to get a testimony from you from the beginning. But anyway, um, put in her resignation letter. She's one of my students. I was encouraging her. We did a, a coaching call. She took a class with me. I encouraged her, like, this is it. Your gifts will make room for you. This is not by accident. This is not, we don't serve a God that makes mistakes. He don't make, there's no accident that he gave you a gift. That he's putting something in your heart that's saying like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. This this doesn't feel like it's where I'm supposed to be at. This is not, because it's not. And here you are trying to fight the, from pressing through, trying to do all the things to make it make sense. And it still doesn't. And then you're, you're listening to the prophets of the land, a.k.a. the false prophets, the news, the, the reporters, the, 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 the liars, basically, that are trying to instill this fear when the word of God is telling you the opposite. That he didn't give, he, he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. The word says that he's going to bless you. It says, if you follow in his ways, he said, I shall open unto thee good treasure, good treasure. Not a, a rotten box, not a, a, a Cracker Jacks box with one little janky ring, good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of of thine hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God which I command thee this day to observe and to do them and shall not go aside from the words which I commanded you to the right hand, to the left, to go after other gods and serve them. So basically, you cannot go anywhere else but to this word. If you're in business right now and you are a faithful believer, it doesn't matter where you are in your faith. The purpose of this is, was not even supposed to be a business Bible study, but. The purpose of me doing my business Bible studies is to bring you back in alignment to the word of God so that you can speak life and not death over your business so that you can usher in the blessings like the word said, the good treasure over your life and over your business because this is the time that we are overtaking all. This is the time that you need to run without getting weary. And grow and not faint. 
this is that time. This is the time to make wise business decisions. There is no recession in the kingdom of God. We don't serve a God that has a lack. We serve a God of abundance. But if you're not in this word and using it as your anchor, the same way the news wants to declare recession and whether they want to say it or not, and they want to lie about numbers, whatever. It doesn't matter because the only thing that has governing authority in your life and your business is the word of God. If you are a blood bought believer, everybody else, I don't know, (laughs) you better run the high like the people say. But if you are a part, a part of the call of God, this is what you need to be doing. This is what you need to be focusing on. These scriptures declaring over your life, nothing else, because nothing else will stand. Nothing else is going to bring you life and life more abundantly. Nothing but these scriptures. Read through Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to post this live um, on my YouTube page. Wasn't even intentionally supposed to be doing a, a business Bible study. But like I said in the beginning, there's no way for me to talk to you guys about business and not talk about God because there is no, there's nothing else. But if you are in this season and anything about your life and and your business you're you've declared a recession you've declared lack you need to go and repent because there is no lack in the kingdom of god and like i said if you are a blood bought believer that should not that should never come out of your mouth because just as the word ended up saying that um The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and all that thou settest thy hand unto. He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord that gave to you. He gave you that business. He's going to bless it. It says he commands blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. There was one part that I read that made me want to loop back to Joseph. I'm just trying to find it. Um... Ooh, I just love that line. The Lord shall open up thee his good treasure. Not just his treasure, his good treasure. The good treasure. You know, there's like the food and there's like the good food that you keep for you and your friend. Like the good treasure. Not just, oh, those are nice. The good treasure? Okay. Um, Where is it? And the Lord shall make thee the hand. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Yes, all these. I can't find it at the moment, but you can rewatch this live um, because I said it in the live. But like I like I was saying, the whole purpose um, of this live is for you to declare life um, over your business. I don't really want to find it. But the, and what I was alluding to with the line that I cannot find at this moment, and I don't want to be on here much longer, um, is that in the time, uh, I think in the time with Joseph, he went out and was able to bless the world. Because it said somewhere in here when I was reading it, he was able to bless the world with what he had stored up. Not just his people, not just his family. But the world during a time of famine and recession. So again, if you want to decree and declare over your business that you're in a recession, that there's going to be lack, that there's... Ask the Lord for supernatural gifts. Ask the Lord for supernatural treasure. Because that's what it says here that he's going to give you. Ask the Lord to give you supernatural strategy for your business so that you can market it in such a way that's going to bring the people that belong to you that are supposed to spend money with you. I was reading and and like I said, this would be in my business Bible studies, but I was reading and studying in Ezra. Ezra is so powerful. And I'm going to share this with you guys and then get off in Ezra. Um, if this was a business, I would give you the extra scriptures. Um, but I was reading for you guys who joined late from Deuteronomy 28 and this live will be on my YouTube page so you can go and watch it there. If you want to get the emails for my business Bible study, um, it's officially going to launch on Wednesday at 9 PM. Click the link in my bio and you will, um, be able to find out all the details, like when it launches, if I do have to change a date or whatever the case is. So please go and subscribe. Um, but in Ezra, Super powerful book. The Lord told me to read it. 
um at the end of the year super testimonies about that but anyway um the lord told me to read it and as i was reading it power oh my gosh power so ezra was rebuilding the temple right so the king who was not to my knowledge he was not a man of god but we know the scripture says that the Lord holds the king's heart in the palm of his hand. When you hold something, you can manipulate it and do whatever you want with it, right? So it says that the king, now Ezra wanted to build the temple unto the Lord. And he ain't had what he needed. The Lord stirred on the king's heart to make him go and say, you know what, Ezra? You want to build a temple unto your God, right? Matter of fact, I'm going to give you everything that you need to go do that. Because what did we just read? It said that even your enemies, even your enemies, even your enemies. And we also read in Proverbs 16, 7, that when your ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hello, people. Okay. Um, so he had told as he says, as like, yo, you want to go build this temple. I'm going to give you everything that you need to go do it. And if anybody says no, here goes the enemies. If anybody says no, have them come to me and I'll deal with them. AKA there will be no enemies for you in this season. Like I posted the other day, like the Lord said, ease, there's going to be ease. When we're recovering all, he said, when he told David, shall I pursue? Yes, recover all. There was no opposition there. There was no opposition there. It was, <laughs> the Lord had laid them down. It was get down and lay down season, people. And it was over, okay? So he said, the, the, the king said, I'm going to give you everything you need. That don't sound like recession to me. When he was already, he was in lack. He was, Ezra didn't have what he needed to build a temple. He just knew that he had a call to go build a temple. Some of y'all, that's where you are in your business. You don't have what you need for your business, but you know the Lord told you to go build the business. How do you know he don't have people sitting there waiting to bless somebody? I heard a wild testimony the other day from somebody. Wild. Did not have what they needed. Did not. Nothing what they needed. It was, it was really specifically a vehicle. The Lord put it on someone else's heart to give them a vehicle. Not, not just any vehicle. What did we just say? Good treasure? A Benz truck. You Are you lending your Benz truck to somebody? Even if you had one or not? Are you lending your Benz truck to somebody and tell them keep it? Keep it until you don't need it no more. The Lord put it on my heart to let y'all use my car. What? A Benz truck, not not a little no shade to nobody, not a little Explorer or Rav Four. A Benz truck, go use it because the Lord already put it on my heart to to let you use it, so you don't have to worry about it. And they had another car, a, a a van that they were thinking that they were like, oh, you know, could we just use your van? No. When it when it came time for him to go get the car. He was like, I don't see, I'm looking for the car. I don't see the car. I don't, where's the car? Because they looking for the van that they asked for. And he hops out. He's like, oh, I'm right outside. He hops out. And they're like, why is he getting out of a Benz truck? We, we just want to, because what did we read? Good treasure. He not, he's not giving you the bare minimum. He's not giving you the scraps. We don't serve a God that gives us scraps. We serve a God that gives us good gifts. It says, if your earthly father would give you good gifts, what more will I do for you? That We serve a God of good treasure. Good treasure. Not just treasure. Not just one little beat with the little metal detector. The... It's all around. That's who we serve. So... Get in alignment with that, that wisdom. Get in alignment with that understanding. Get in alignment with that reality. That is your reality. Not what the world wants to tell you. This reality, this truth, the, the, the truth that Joseph had enough during a, a famine, a worldwide famine, not just a U.S. famine, a worldwide famine. Because it says you will be a lender and not a borrower. You will be, he would make you plenteous in goods. 
plenteous. Ezra had everything he needed to go do what he was supposed to be doing. The king said, give him everything. And then said, matter of fact, go to Babylon, go to the other land that we just sent things that has some stuff and go take it from them and go give it to him. That's the God that I serve. Matter of fact, run their things and give it to, give it to Candace. Because what, what, what do we, what do we read in Proverbs 16, 7? If you, if you please the Lord in your ways, he will even make your enemies be at peace with you. So, I mean, I ain't got nothing else to say to y'all, okay? Because this wasn't even supposed to be a Bible study. But, and it wasn't officially because I didn't really give you all scriptures. And I want to, I want to make sure that I'm with integrity and I give you scriptures so that you can go back and study yourself. Um... But we just got here anyway, because like I said, ain't no business without God, because what are we doing? If that's the case, then you can go read your self-help book and something good online and follow these Instagram scammers and let them continue to scam you. But what I'm here to do is to empower you and to give you life and to point you back to the God who can do it for you, the God who sent you from the beginning. So... Guys, my business Bible study will launch next Wednesday by the mercy and grace of God at 9 p.m. So if you want to join that, please um, click the link of my bio to subscribe so that you can get the email notifications and the little emails that I send out. I will say little because they're very brief um, and they're not all the time, um, but they are informative and just encouraging for your day. So click the link of my bio so that you can get that. Um, and I will be going live a lot more. I don't know what I'm doing with my nail page, y'all. I'm just tell y'all to be honest, because that's just not where I feel like God wants me to be right now. Yes, Eastern time, sorry, Alexis. But it's late right now. It'll be 9 p.m., so it'll be at least 6 for you. Um, <laughs> um, but it will always be posted or reposted on my YouTube page, so you'll be able to watch it. Um, like, I'm going to put this one up before I go to bed. Um, and I keep saying I'm going to go to bed early and here we are at 11 o'clock. Um, but it's okay because the Lord will give me strength, okay? Um, so yes, make sure that you guys subscribe. I'm super excited to do this with you all. Um, <clears throat> and I hope you do check the emails. Go back and watch the live I did on Tuesday, which was like the intro um, to this, to the Business Bible Study. And it will be officially launching on Wednesday of next week. Let me figure out what the date of that is. Wednesday is the 17th um, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, amen, Denise. Um, so I'm just, just bear with my Instagram page because I don't know what I'm doing. Like in terms of like with my page and my nail content, I really feel like I'm going to move it all to my academy like I, I don't I'm still in prayer about it because this is what for a while the Lord has wanted me to do and I'm just now actually pursuing it but I also feel like now is the right time so I'm just trying to order my steps righteously with the Lord so that I can um be a servant to you guys and you all should look up your names okay even if you your name like you're like I've never heard of Alexis in the Bible um you should really look up your name um because it's there your name is powerful whether your parents remixed it or did whatever they did with it there's a root somewhere I really believe and your name is going to mean something very powerful. Um, the Lord had led me last year to look up my name. Um, and I knew Candace meant queen. So like in like Ethiopian language, it's like you would say like Candace Alexis. Um, cause it meant like queen, like actually queen, right? And then I looked it up in the Hebrew. It means servant. I was like, Jesus, why? Um, <laughs> Um, and I say that because, um, you know, when you think of it, like you're in servitude. But then I was like, you know what? I'm in a really great company because Jesus was our servant leader. And I know that I am a leader. And the best leaders are servants. So it was just like 
a real a real a really powerful um demonstration of god for me to see like i feel like my whole name is prophetic but that's a whole nother conversation but anyway um i think it's just very powerful so you should all take time and look up your name not just like you know google it but like look it up in the bible and look it up in uh the hebrew and greek so you can do that if you get the blue letter bible um I still use you version just because I like the interface. But if I'm studying, I use the Blue Letter Bible because you can look up in the concordance the actual meanings of the words because a lot of the words that we use now is not what they meant back then. So it gives you a much better um, understanding of what you're reading and the power behind it because, I mean, the power that's in this word is just next level. So anyway, um, I don't know how we got there, but <laughs> I think it's powerful for you to look up your name. So if we're going to start this year off strong, we want to start, the word says, and all you're getting, get understanding. So you need to understand the fullness of the call that's on your life. And that starts with your name. Like, what else can you, like, really begin with? That was the first thing that was given to you when you were you entered into this world was a name. Um, before you even received love and all of that, like, you were given a name. Um, so you should find out what your name actually means and pray about it because I'm sure it's going to add onto your life, um, something powerful. So that's all I got for you guys tonight. Um, like I said, I'm super duper excited to really embark on this journey with you guys. You're going to be doing it with me because <laughs> let's be real, um, if you're like one of my close friends or even if you were in a class with me at some point, like you've heard me talk about God or encourage someone in the Lord, but like to actually teach and like give prophetic words and um, just like exalt people in this capacity is new for me. But obedience is where we're at this year. Radical obedience and... I know where there is obedience, there is provision, and there is protection. So that's all I need, friends. I don't need nothing else from nobody. If the Lord says I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And so are you. So thank you guys for joining. Um, I had a good time. Um, like I said, this will be on my YouTube page. Please go subscribe to my YouTube page, Candace Idahan. It's my name on every single platform. You can um, find all of my other videos there. The one that I did on Tuesday is there as well. Click the link in my Instagram bio if you want to join my business Bible study. It's going to be so good and impactful and going to help your business. Um, and yeah, I cannot wait to do this again with you guys. It's supposed to be at 9 p.m. on the 17th Eastern Standard Time. And I will see you all then. Send me a DM if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, there shouldn't be no concerns. If there are, take that up with the Lord. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. So have a good night or whatever time zone you, you're, you're on or whatever time that you watch this. Have a blessed day. Love you guys. Bye.